Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last lecture was all about all the theoretical knowledge and an introductory part of machine learning using Apache Spark. But now let's get real and start building our machine learning model using the MLlib library in Apache Spark. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with designing our first machine learning pipeline. So in the previous lecture, we have seen all about the basic introductory part of machine learning where we have seen what is machine learning, what are their different types and how we can utilize Spark to build our machine learning pipelines using the MLlib library. So now let's get real and start coding our MLlib pipeline. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. So the concept of pipeline is very common across many machine learning frameworks which is like a way for organizing a series of operations to apply on top of your data. So in MLlib, this pipeline API will provide like a high level API, which is built on top of data frames. So data frames, you know that these are like tables like RDBMS, which is like a structured API in Apache Spark. So it is used for organizing our machine learning workflows. So this pipeline API is composed of series of transformers as well as the estimators, but you should know this stuff. So we will go over this terminology in a bit. So throughout this lecture, we will utilize like a San Francisco housing data set, which is from the inside Airbnb. So it will contain the information about Airbnb rentals in San Francisco. So it will contain like a number of bedrooms, the locations, as well as the review scores and so on. And our end goal would be like to build a model for predicting the nightly rental prices for listing in all the city. So this is like a regression problem because like the price is a continuous variable. So we'll discuss through like the workflow a data scientist would go through to approach this problem. So it will include like feature engineering, also, also building the models as well as the hyper parameter tuning, which is also a very important concept in machine learning world. And at last, we are going to evaluate our model performance. So this data set is like quite messy and it can be difficult to model. So to intent of this lecture is like not to show you every API in the MLlib, but to discuss about and gain the knowledge which will get you started with using the MLlib library to build this end to end pipelines. But before going into more detail, let's hit the terminology first. So the first thing is transformer. So transformer as the name suggests, it will accept the data frame as an input and returns the new data frame with one or more columns appended to it. So this transformer do not learn any parameters from your data and it simply apply the rule based transformation and it will apply it on like either the prepared data or the model training or like the generated predictions using the trained MLlib model. So this is like a transformer. The next one is the estimator. So estimator will learn the parameters from your data frame and returns a model, which is like a transformer. Then we have the pipeline. So pipeline is nothing but used for organization. So it organizes like a series of transformers and the estimators into a single model. So we can say like while the pipelines are estimators, output of the pipeline will return a pipeline model as a transformer. So this was all about the basic terminology of machine learning library. So now we will go ahead and step by step build our machine learning model. So here our first step is like data injection and exploration. So we have slightly pre-processed data here in our example right now and we have converted all the integers to doubles as well as selected the informative subset of more than 100 fields. So further for any missing values in our data, we have imputed the median value and added an indicator column. So I will give you all the link to this data files. So it's like a parquet file which you can get from our GitHub repository. So I'm going to get you all the links in the description below so that you will not have to go into any hassle. So let's take a quick peek at the data and the corresponding schema assigned to it. So let's jump on to the coding part now. Okay, so first thing here is you have to import all the models. So this is our script and we are going to explore it step by step. So in the first step, we have imported all the packages. So you are already aware of the Spark session, which we are importing from PySpark.sql. But for machine learning, we need to get all these packages from the PySpark.ml. 
so you have to import all the necessary packages and i'll explain you which packages is required in which step so once you've done that let's execute this once okay so in the next step you have to build a spark session this is like entry level of your spark application whether it is like a simple data engineering pipeline or the machine learning pipeline you have to create your spark session first and you have to define like the app name as well as you can give like different deployment modes where you can select like master so there are different masters available but let's keep it simple we don't have distributed system here we just operating a single node cluster so those will be like default so we have just given the app name and use the get or create to create a new spark session or just get the existing one okay so just execute it and create your spark session now okay so you have created the spark session the next step would be like we have to define our file path so this is like a c drive path where i have defined the data for this data frame so for particular example we are using the airbnb data which we are going to see in a bit so here once we define the path we just need to read it and create a data frame on top of it so we are using the parquet as a file format because these files are parquet files and we are given the file path so once our data frame is created we are just selecting the columns which we need and relevant to our machine learning pipeline so to do that we have the select method and just got all the relevant columns in our data frame and to show that just use the show method as you can see this is executing now okay so this is our data file so we have neighborhood cleansed room type bedroom bathrooms number of reviews and the price we need to create a regression model which will predict the price of the room and we are going to use this data frame in our subsequent steps so we have completed our first step so congratulations it was pretty simple we have just ingested our data and explored it a bit so now the next step would be like we need to split this and create a training and the test data set so we can do like a manual split or a random split so all we have to do is we need to create a testing data set and the training data set so this is very required because before we begin like the feature engineering and the modeling we need to divide this data into these groups so depending on the size of your data set our train to test ratio will vary but many data scientists will use like a 80 20 approach so the 80 percent of the data will go for the training set and the 20 percent will go for the test set so this is like a standard train test split but you may ask me like why we are not using the entire data for training our model so the problem here is if we build a model on the entire data set it is possible that the model would memorize or overfit to the training data set which we have provided in the first place and we would like have no more data with which we can evaluate that model so that is very important so to know to evaluate your model and to confirm that this model is working as per the requirements you have to keep some data for testing purposes so the model's performance on the test data is a proxy for how well it will perform on the unseen or the newer data so for our airbnb data set we are keeping like 80 percent of the training set and we will set aside like 20 percent of data for test purposes and further we will set like a random seed for reproducibility such that if we rerun this code we will get the same data points going to our train and the test data set respectively so the value of seed itself shouldn't matter much but the data scientists often like to set it to 42 so let's jump on to the code and see where we can input this seed value so as you can see here we have like the training data set and the test data set which is like a random split of 80 percent to the training data set and a 20 percent to the test data set and we have given the seed value as 42 so once we execute this we got like there are 5780 rows in the training set and 1366 in the test set so our data split is completed so we can train our data on this 5780 rows and to evaluate our model we can use this 1366 rows at the last so this step is completed but there is also one more thing we need to discuss 
like what happens if we change the number of executors in our spark cluster so what happens is like the catalyst optimizer will determine the optimal way for partitioning your data and the size of your data set so given that the data in spark data frame is now row partitioned and each worker will perform its split independently of the other workers that is going to happen when you change like number of executors in your spark cluster so the next step would be like preparing the features with the transformers that is very important so now we have like the split our data into training and test data sets we will prepare the data to build a linear regression model which will predict the price given the number of bedrooms so in a later example we will include all the relevant features but for now let's make sure that we have the mechanics in place so this linear regression like many other algorithm will require that all the input features are contained within the same vector so that you need to include in your data frame so that's why we need to transform our data so for some task of putting all our features into a single vector we will use vector assembler transformation so as you can see we have like vector assembler transformation we have input the column as the bedrooms and we have chosen the features as a output column so it will generate the features column as a output so we will like create a new data frame with this additional column so it combines the values of those input columns into a single vector so as you can see we got the output here so we generated like the features as a output column which is like in the vectorized form and we have used this vector assembler function to achieve that and we have all done all this transformation on the training data set so that is going to happen so we are not going to touch like our testing data set that is like for evaluating our models and we are just getting the data we are selecting bedrooms features price to get the output and see how it is coming up so it is like vectorized now so our next step would be we have to understand the linear regression so that is going to be our next step so the linear regression as we have discussed in the previous lecture it will model a linear relationship between your dependent variable and one or more independent variable so in our example we want to fit linear regression model for predicting the price of airbnb rental which is given the number of bedrooms so that is going to be our output of the model so in this figure as you can see we have a single feature x and the output which is y so this y is nothing but like a dependent variable so linear regression will seek to fit an equation for line to x and y which is like a scalar variable and it can be expressed as y is equal to mx plus b that you already familiar with so where like this m will be like slope and the b is the offset or you can say it as a intercept so the dots which indicates the true xy pairs from our data set and the solid line will indicate the line of best fit for this data set and you can see these like the data points will do not perfectly line up so we are usually think of a linear regression as a fitting model to y is equal to mx plus b plus epsilon where this epsilon will be like a error drawn independently as per the record x value from some distribution so linear regression can also be extended to handle multiple independent variable so this is what you need to understand about the linear regression now let's talk about using the estimators for building our machine learning model okay so our next step would be we need to use like estimators for building our model so after setting like this vector assembler we have our data which is prepared and transform into the format that our linear regression model will need so in spark like this linear regression is a type of estimator so it takes a data frames and it will return a model so that is the task of the estimator so estimator basically will learn the parameters from your data and it will have an estimator name dot fit method and we eagerly evaluate whereas the transformers are lazily evaluated so some other examples of these estimators will include like imputer as well as decision tree classifier as well as the random forest regressor so as you can see in this input of our linear regression 
we have the feature column which is features which we generated in the previous step which is like a vectorized form of our bedrooms column and we have like the label column as a price so that you need to notice here and also we have like this linear regression dot fit method so this fit will return like the reg linear regression model which we have stored in the lr model and we have given the input as a as our vectorized trend data frame from our previous step so in other words the output of estimators fit method is like a transformer so once the estimator has learned the parameters the transformer can apply these parameters to the new data points for generating the predictions so let's execute this step and create our transformer so once this is in place we need to inspect the parameters it learned from our data frame so once we execute this step in this stage we have completed using our estimators for building our model but the next step is even interesting like creating a pipeline that is going to be the next step so in this step if we want to apply our model to our test data set we need to prepare that data in the same way as the training data set so that will require like passing it through the vector assembler so often times this data preparation pipelines will have multiple steps and will become like a cumbersome task to remember not only the steps to apply but also the order of those step execution so this is like the motivation behind bringing out the pipeline api you will like simplify the specify stages if you want your data to pass through in order and also the spark will take care of the processing stages so they will provide the user with better code usability and the organization so in spark these pipelines are estimators whereas pipeline models are transformers so we need to build our pipeline now so in this stage we have built our pipeline on the training data set so let's execute this as you can see we are using the pipeline method here and use the fit method on the training data frame and after that we have transformed the testing data frame to get the predictions so in this code we built a model using only a single feature which is like bedrooms however you should want to build a model using all of your features and some of which may be categorical so categorical feature will take on discrete values and have no intrinsic ordering so this is how you should build your machine learning pipeline so once we execute this we got prediction from our testing data frame so this was like only creating your machine learning pipeline but there is another very important step you need to complete which is like evaluating your models so that we are going to see in our next lecture so this will be like the part 1 of our machine learning pipeline where we have just built like a simple very easy to understand machine learning model which predict the price of the airbnb using the input as the bedrooms this is was very very simple so once you got all the understanding you will able to apply it on your own data set as well so i hope you enjoyed this video and you find it very helpful so in the next lecture let's evaluate our model and we will learn how to save and load your m machine learning models so i'll see you in the next lecture i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell for latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching